He fed them, he fed them with the finest wheat and satisfied them with honey from the rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And good morning, everybody. It's lovely to be here at half eight. And a lovely morning it is, thanks be to God. We gather ourselves from all that's been happening to us, and from communion celebrations for some of us, for the little ones, and we remember our need for God's mercy. Sometimes, as I say, we're not half thankful enough for all that we have received. So let's remember what we have to be thankful for. And it's personal. And let's confess our ungratefulness or our lack of gratefulness. <coughs> Lord of mercy. Christ of mercy. Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let's glory in God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the only one. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Will you join me? as we collect our prayers together. And we'll say it together, if you wouldn't mind. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruit of our redemption, live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we read from Exodus. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses went and told the people all the commands of the Lord and all the ordinances. In answer, all the people said with one voice, we will observe all the commands that the Lord has decreed. Moses put all the commands of the Lord into writing, and early next morning he built an altar at the foot of the mountain with twelve standing stones for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then he directed certain young Israelites to offer holocausts and to immolate bullocks to the Lord as communion sacrifices. Half of the blood Moses took up and put into basins. The other half he cast on the altar. And taking the book of the covenant, he read it to the listening people and they said, We will observe all that the Lord has decreed. We will obey. Then Moses took the blood and cast it towards the people. This he said, is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, containing all these rules. The word of the Lord. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me, the cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. 
For precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Now Christ has come as the high priest of all the blessings which were to come. He has passed through the greater, the more perfect tent, which is better than one made by men's hands, because it is not of this created order. And he has entered the sanctuary once and for all, taking with him not the blood of goats and bull calves, but his own blood, having won an eternal redemption for us. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer are sprinkled on those who have incurred defilement, and they restore the holiness of their outward lives. How much more effectively the blood of Christ who offered himself as the perfect sacrifice to God through the eternal spirit, can purify our inner self from dead actions so that we do our service to the living God. He brings a new covenant as the mediator, only so that the people who were called to an eternal inheritance may actually receive what was promised. His death took place to cancel the sins that infringed the earlier covenant. The word of the Lord. I invite you to join with me in reciting the sequence which can be found on the back of the bulletin. Behold the bread of angels sent for pilgrims in their banishment. The bread for God's true children meant that may not unto dogs be given. Often the olden types foreshowed, in Isaac on the altar bowed, and in the ancient paschal food, and in the manna sent from heaven. Come then, good shepherd, bread divine, still show to us thy mercy sign. O feed us still, still keep us thine, so may we see thy glory shine in fields of immortality. O thou, the wisest, mightiest, best, our present food, our future rest, come make us each thy chosen guest, co-heirs of thine and comrades blessed, with saints whose dwelling is with thee. Amen. Alleluia. Please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. And I make my request again. Would you bless me, please, before I read the gospel and attempt to break the word with you? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying 
a pitcher or a large container of water. Follow him and say to the owner of the house which he enters, the master says, where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished with couches, all prepared. Make the preparations there. The disciples set out and went into the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. As they were eating, he took some bread and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them. Take it, he said. This is my body. Then he took a cup and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them and all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood, the blood of the covenant which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink wine, the new wine, in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Kind of mysterious, some of that, isn't it? And uh, I didn't prepare any introduction, but I did write something. I don't know how many times young men from the traveling community have come to me over the years asking for a pledge, to take a pledge to abstain from alcohol. And it's normally for a short period of time, and I've always gone with them and always prayed with them. Maybe I should have said, Are you serious? A bit more often. When we remember what Jesus did, taking bread and a cup of wine, are we taking a pledge too? And is God taking a pledge with us? Are we taking a pledge to drink the cup he drank to the dregs? Remember uh, John and James who went with the mummy to look for the best place? Do you remember that story? And Jesus said, can you drink the cup that I... Oh, we can, of course. You will drink it. But the places are not mine to allocate. So that question occurred to me reading today's readings. Going back to Moses, he's giving the people a new law. Hmm. A new pledge that they will live together as a people, respecting one another's rights and dignity. They're pledging to live a new life. And remember, this is a people who's just been freed from slavery with all the hurt and the injury and maybe the anger too that they've suffered over generations. And they're pledging to live together as a people respecting one another. Seriously? Imagine it. Seriously? Go on to the Gospel. Mark tells the story of how Jesus arranged to eat the Last Supper with his friends, his disciples, those who were following him. And he tells it vividly. You can picture it for yourselves, and I invite you to do so. Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? The Passover, remember, was and still is that memory meal where the liberation of Jesus' ancestors from slavery was commemorated. 
The people's pledge to live as a, as a people, as brothers and sisters, as one people respecting one another. And what does he say? Going to the city and you will meet a man carrying a container of water. Hmm. But that was work only women did. So easily identified. Follow him and say to the master of the house, our master says, where is my dining room? Where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He'll show you a large upper room furnished with couches all prepared. Make the preparations for a spare. The two set out into the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When they were eating, he took bread. Then he said the blessing. He broke it and he gave it to them. Take this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks to his father, and he knew what was coming, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he didn't stop anybody, even Judas. This is my blood, the blood of the covenant which is to be poured out for many. And Mark goes on after the psalm had been sung. They start out for the Mount of Olives. And we all know what starts with the Mount of Olives. Friends, this isn't just an eyewitness account. It's also that. But it's a rite of remembrance a liturgy where what Jesus did is reenacted, making it present again as it does for us. And we eat and drink, pledging to live as brothers and sisters. Is that what's going on at every Mass? That's some pledge. Think of it. And keep it. And we break it. And we come back again and again, remembering again what Jesus did and said. And we eat. And we drink. And we pray for the strength to follow him. And even though we don't live up to it, we still come back. We pray for the grace to live as members of his body. Because Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet, no feet to walk the path but ours. No hands to hold others in respect, but ours. Christ has no body now, but ours. And we have experience of the grace being given to us. Coming, I have to admit and confess, from I don't know where or how. When least expected, but when I needed it. I invite you sometime today, as part of today's celebration, to stop and treat yourself to the memory. Memory only you have of the grace given unexpectedly 
knew he needed it. And say thanks. But treat yourself to the memory. Go back to that moment or those moments. It's a lovely thing to do. And it's not that we have to do it, but we have it. We have the experience to go back to. And everybody, each one of us, has our own experience. So sometime, maybe it won't be today, treat yourself again to the memory. Why do you have that memory? Why did that happen to you? If you look at the second reading, Jesus went into the sanctuary of God in heaven with his own body and blood, having won an eternal, an eternal redemption for us. He won it in the garden. He won it in the law courts. He won it on Calvary. And he went in with his own blood, offered as a perfect sacrifice to the Father in the eternal spirit. Sacrifice, giving up everything in trust to God. That God could take care of everything. And although everything was given, everything would be well. Doing that, he brings a new covenant, a new pledge, not just by us, but by God, to live with us as a people. So that we who have been called personally, invited personally, may actually receive what has been promised, the grace to live as brothers and sisters, as friends. His death that we recall and remember took place to cancel all wrongdoing and bring us with him, his father's children, his own brothers and sisters, so that we, we might be where he is now. Christ has no body now but ours. And is that what we're passing on to the young people who have just made their communion? We might have to spell it out a little bit. But God's pledge always to stand by us and our pledge to live as brothers and sisters and God's pledge to give us that wonderful grace from, I don't know where it comes from, when it comes, but I do, but it gives me the strength that I need. There's a good reason why I go before the gospel and bow before the people of God. Christ has no body now.
we quietly and strongly proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We gather to pray today in the name of Jesus, who said, I am the bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. May we always comprehend the wonderful love of God present under the appearance of bread and wine. May our own faith be deepened today through our reception of the Eucharist. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have made their first Holy Communion. May they come to appreciate this gift more deeply, and may they never take the Eucharist for granted. Lord, hear us. There is one body of Christ in which we share. We pray that all Christians may be brought into communion with each other. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for peace on earth. May all nations and peoples come to resolve their difficulties in non-violent ways. May the Eucharist inspire us to vindicate the dignity and rights of all. Lord, hear us. As we celebrate in thanksgiving to the Lord of creation, may we realize more fully our responsibility to respect and protect the natural environment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray especially for peace among Christians. The Christians of Russia and the Ukraine. Christians in Africa. And we pray for peace between Jews and Muslims and Christians in Jesus' own holy land and all lands that are holy to him. Lord, hear us. And we pray who, for those who have died. And we remember recently deceased Brendan McCaffrey from Connecticut, Joan McGill, Marie Dines, Nay Foy, Gregory Burke, Maggie Hall, Dominguez Dutel, Lily O'Reilly, Jose Suarez de Oliveira, and at this time Nancy McCoy, Joachim Martins da Costa, Mateo Scama, and today, Sunday, William Cullen, Elizabeth Beatty, Domingos de Jesus, and Joseph Mangan. May their souls and the souls of all the faithfully parted, through the mercy of God, rest in peace.
Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to truly appreciate this gift and receive it worthily for our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just as he did, we bring the bread and wine to the altar and bless the Father. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. It's through your goodness that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. For the mystery of this wine, and this water, may we come to share the divinity of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself and rejoiced to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, it's through your goodness that we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our wrongdoing and clean away all our sins. Let's pray together that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. Grant your people, your church, Lord, we pray, the gift of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings that we present here. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bronze of death and manifest and show forth the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit on them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, Father, when the supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, his followers, and said, take this all of you and drink from it with this as the cup of my blood, the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of blessing, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be here in your prison presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, at sharing and partaking in the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church, your people spread throughout our world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, with Eamon our Bishop, and Michael and Sean and all the bishops and the clergy and the entire Christian people that your son has gained as his own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, those we've met, whose names we've mentioned today, those particularly who have died in violence. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles, St. Joseph, the Saints, John the Baptist, Saints of our own families, Patrick, Colum, Killa, Breed, Brona, Ida, all the saints. We mer merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And together we say with a large amen at the end, through him and with him and in him, our God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And we stand and now and we pray the way our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with us all. And let's recognize Jesus living among us as we bow to one another or acknowledge one another across our community or embrace one another or shake hands with one another. God love you and thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, their sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, their sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, their sins. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us any kind of condemnation, but health and strength in mind and body. This is the Lamb of God. This is the one who takes away the sin of the world. We're happy to be called to God's table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. On the feast of the body and blood of Christ, I am going to take the chalice and the hosts. If somebody wishes to receive on the tongue, better go to one of the ministers, and I'm going to offer you to take the host and to dip it quietly into the sacred blood of our Lord in celebration of the body and blood of Christ. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
surrender to Jesus. I surrender to God. I surrender
We'll stand for the final prayer. And maybe after the antiphon we can say it together. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Grant, O Lord, we pray together, that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless each and every one of us, all belonging to us and all we come in contact with, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let's go out in joy and peace to tell the good news to the other generations and the ones to come. God bless you and thanks very much. <laughs>